morning guys. You are gonna join me on a trip down to the Stelvio Pass in Italy. I'm heading down there for a holiday with my other half Lou who's actually driving at the moment which makes a nice change. We're in BMW's very latest M8 competition Grand Coupe which as far as I can tell so far is probably the ultimate road trip car. The journey is going to be over a couple of days and in fact tonight we're going to be staying in Baden-Baden which is in the Black Forest in Germany in one of my favourite spots. Our first stop is the Euro Tunnel and in fact we're going to be meeting up with the Petrolhead Tour gang who are off on their Alps and Pyrenees trip. It's not fluke that we're there with those guys because originally we we're actually going to be going away with them for a few days on the tour and then having our own little holiday in France. But due to quarantine rules, we've decided not to do that and stick to countries that we're allowed to travel in and come back without quarantine. So places like Germany and Italy. Hopefully we continue to get weather like this for the rest of our journey. Once we get down to the Stelvio Pass, I'm going to take this car out for a proper drive. Okay guys, we have arrived in sunny France. I hope you enjoyed some of those shots of the cars on the Petrolhead Tours. We've got a gorgeous, I think it's a 991.2 Turbo S in front of me in crayon, but looks like it's had a lot of work done to it. It's sitting absolutely perfect. As we see there, it's just gorgeous. A couple of people out filming. <laughs> this is exciting. Right, now I've got to readjust my head because we're driving on the right hand side of the road over here in France. Lovely trip so far. We've done about 60 miles and we've got some of the Petrolhead Tour cars coming past now. There's Tom in his amazing Lamborghini. And there is that 991 Turbo S. And here comes a epic M140i followed by an original M2. How cool is that? That's why I love these trips, absolutely love them. Even boring stretches of the motorway are entertaining. We're now cruising along and I've got Tom in his Lamborghini Huracan and Supergab in his GT3 RS in front of us. Just gonna get him to nail it. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Listen to that! guys hopefully you enjoyed those flybys it was awesome to hang out with the Petrohead Tours group slightly jealous of the journey they have ahead but also I think we're gonna have quite a good time so looking forward to that it was really good to catch up with those guys and if you're not familiar with Petrohead Tours I'll link their website below basically they run the best road trips 
in Europe and probably in the world to be fair. I've been on many, so search Petrolhead Tours on my YouTube if you want to see some videos on that. So really cool to see them. Cheers to Pete and Dan. We have covered 850 kilometers since we left London this morning. And we're actually now dropping down into Baden-Baden, which is exactly where the RS6 launch was right at the beginning of this year. I think it was end of January. So you might recognize this actual road as the road that I did my RS6 review on. Really cool coming back here in this car to try it out. We're only a couple of miles away from the hotel now, which is great news. I think we're gonna have an early dinner, potentially a beer, and get ready for tomorrow. Wow, this is a hairpin and a half. Ooh. Yeah, this car's maybe a little bit wide for some of these roads. Good morning guys, we had a fantastic evening at our little hotel just outside of Baden-Baden. Spent the last hour or so going across the top of the Black Forest on the Route 500 and now we kind of peeled off. We're kind of heading down to the bottom of Germany and towards Austria, if that makes sense on a map. This is actually a little section where I set my cameras up for the RS6 video and in fact, ironically, it was snowing and the road was covered in ice and yes, I was on my winter tires. I was going so much quicker in that car then because there was nothing else here, it was just lovely. But as you can see, lots of motorbikes coming the other way and yeah, a lot of them coming over into our lane as well and some of the twisty turns. So really don't want to have a head on with a motorbike. You join us on a de-restricted bit of a German autobahn, but unfortunately, the reality of one of these roads on a sunny Sunday is that there's lots and lots of traffic. And in fact, I just reached 170 k's an hour. And that was the fastest I've done in the past hour sitting on this road. Most of it's been like this sitting at 110, which is basically the UK speed limit of 70 miles an hour. Okay guys, you join me on this awesome mountain pass in Austria. Today we started in Germany, we then went to Austria, we then had to go through to Switzerland due to a road being closed and now we're back in Austria again, about 45 minutes away from our hotel in Italy. <laughs> um, so we've, uh, we've been around the houses today but it's been amazing. I mean, we've just been going along this big gorge in very heavy traffic, but the views are just incredible. And I think by the time we get to the top of this pass, the sun should be out still. We might even get a nice sort of magic hour. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna enjoy driving this very fast bus up this awesome bit of road. Once today, there's very little traffic in front of us, which is a, a very nice change. Yeah, these hairpins are so tight. I mean, they're more M2 than M8, if I'm being honest, but still this thing is just incredible. I mean, when you spend all day in this thing and you don't drive it hard or use more than about 20% of its power, it's always very surprising when you do put your foot down. Just the acceleration and the grip up here. Foot down and we're just off. Okay guys, it's getting pretty dark now. As you can see, we're into Italy and we're about 10 minutes away from our hotel. 
beautiful scenery in front of us. Hopefully you can see those snow-capped mountains. Um, just beautiful countryside, really, really is. Welcome to Italy. I'm gonna turn the cameras off now because this will be very grainy and I will see you bright and early on the Stelvio Pass. Hey guys, we've finally arrived at the Stelvio Pass, almost 1,400 kilometers later. We actually came up the Umbriol Pass, which is the other side of Stelvio Pass, to get here this morning. And that is arguably actually a better driver's road, but this is just stunning. I hope you've enjoyed those drone shots of the sun coming up. It's just magic and uh, definitely worth getting out of bed nice and early. We're now gonna head back down the Stelvio Pass with you guys to go and enjoy breakfast at our hotel. So let's hit it. What you're gonna discover quite quickly is <laughs> that the Stelvio Pass is very tight in places and some of the hairpins are, well, they're not even really fun. And in a car like this that's over five meters wide, you almost have to do a three-point turn just to get around some of them. So I would never come to the Stelvio Pass thinking that it's going to be the ultimate driver's road and I knew that because I've been here, I think this is probably my fourth or fifth time here actually, but you come here for the views, it's just spectacular and we've been very lucky that it's been super quiet here this morning, especially after yesterday's experience. It was a day full of traffic jams and slow moving cars and buses and loads of cyclists and stuff like that but this morning up here there's been a couple of trucks a couple of motorbikes but that is about it as you can see it's mostly first and second gear stuff here especially these hairpins what the cameras probably aren't picking up is just how cambered these turns are they're like mini sort of carousels each corner which is good, because I suppose if you just miss your brake a little bit, it's probably gonna help you that last bit, maybe save you from flying off the edge. Let's talk about this car a little bit. I am gonna do a review on this car in a few days time. So this has just really been about the Stelvio Pass and our journey down here. I do realize I haven't spoken much about this car. I mean, it's been fantastic getting down here. It really is the ultimate road trip car super comfortable we've done like i said 1400 miles what's that about eight no, sorry 1400 kilometers about 800 miles over two days you couldn't do that in too many cars without getting some aches and pains but this has just swallowed up those miles no problem i found a few faults with this car which i will talk about in my review uh, but on the whole it's just epic it really really is it does feel bigger and heavier than say the M5 Comp, but I can't complain, it's, it's mega. And it is just so fast. As you've probably seen, Matt Watson actually had this very press car last week and timed it 0-62 in three seconds dead, which is just insanity for a car that weighs two tons and is five and a half meters long or five and a bit meters long madness as you can see it opens up a little bit now so we're actually in fourth gear here wow the brakes yeah this has got the ultimate package which includes the carbon ceramics which on a pass like this in a car weighing two tons is nice and handy take liberties down here there's really no runoff and just a concrete wall to greet you 
we're gonna go about halfway down. Stelvio Pass, in my head, sort of made up of two sections. This top section, which is the iconic bit, which is the bit that you see in pictures and postcards and drone shots. And then there's the bottom bit, which again is probably a bit more fun to drive, but it's a bit more sheltered and in trees and stuff. Let's see how slow I'm having to go through each hairpin. <laughs> I'm sure my M2 would be a bit more agile through the hairpins just because it's that much shorter. Um, it is quite comical. Although this has a stiff ride, it does ride the bumps really well. Like I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable, even when I'm in a stiff suspension setting. I'm in sports at the moment, which is the middle setting. Obviously this has got the M adaptive suspension, so you've got three settings. We've been in comfort pretty much the whole trip. Comfort is nice, but a bit like in the M5 Comp, it's still pretty firm. Because you've got to remember, this is the competition model, which in BMW speak, as far as I can tell, means slightly uncomfortable ride. Get it down a bit further now. That is a starting to go a little bit. Just gonna say we've been very lucky with traffic as a truck comes flying along. I notice a slight lack in pickup also at the altitude because I think we're still at well, I don't know maybe two and a half thousand meters or something here but yeah definitely a slight delay a bit of turbo lag due to the altitude but I mean I'm not talking not talking a massive amount. There's actually a hotel, restaurant, cafe halfway down, which is, well, probably not the best place to meet someone, but there you go. Uh, which, is, which is a good place to stop for coffee if you're over here cruising around. Oh, let me just check that the forward facing camera has got that shot. Yes, it has. <laughs> oh, yes. It really does look that good. you can see it's fun it's amazing I'm loving it because of the views and stuff but you're just not going to come to the Stelvio Pass for a spirited drive because it's just too tight something like the mini GP3 would be good up here or maybe a motorbike but even a motorbike these hairpins are just so sharp getting down to what I think of as the halfway point where the hotel is and I think that's where I'm going to end the video because we're going to descend into well relative darkness and as I say the rest of it is not as picturesque as this top bit and this is really what, what I wanted to share with you guys I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and this journey with us down here I can definitely recommend it once all the COVID restrictions and stuff lift, um, and you can enjoy, you know, parts of Austria and obviously the French Alps, which I think is still the best driving bits. We'll just come in here so I can show you where the little uh, restaurant is. Because actually, when you're at the restaurant, the last time I was here was with my Australian car journalist friend Paul Marrick and we actually came here with a R8 V10 Spider and a i8 Spider. 
I8 Roadster Spider. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. That's bad, isn't it? It's BMW. But look at this for a view. Look. I'll just stop here. I've got Mr. Beard looking at me like, what am I doing? But I'm just going to stay here. Just so you can have a look at that. I think this is a good place to end the video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please make sure you tune in for the review that I'll do in a few days' time. I feel like I know this car pretty well. Thanks a lot to my gorgeous girlfriend who's just out of shot, Lou, who's uh, been as patient as a saint during this trip and has helped me with some of the filming. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys at the next one. Cheers. Thank you.